of Beneath the Five Kings, a Pathfinder playthrough of the Sky King's Tomb Adventure Path. I am Brendan, and I am here with Austin, Justin, Josh, Lorna, no, Dylan, and Sarah. I try to point at everyone as you say it. We're, we're going to play some Pathfinder. Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, pretty eventful week last week. Um, gosh. I think I had a banter topic earlier today, but I don't remember what it was. You got nice. it. Nice. Really, really think long and hard. Oh, I saw I something. Topic. Mine's not a banter topic. I just saw something funny, so I'm going to say it real quick. I saw someone on Reddit for Pathfinder 2E say, how do you pronounce Pathfinder? Do you say Pathfinder 2nd Edition, or do you say Pathfinder, and then they wrote, like, T-O-O-I-E, like, 2E. And I thought Pathfinder that was like banjo to e? Sure, yeah, exactly. So I thought that was funny and I'd like to share. But that is not a band topic, so we could talk about you no know, band topic can be what is the most influential Nintendo sixty four game you've ever played and why is it banjo to e? I have a banter topic. Yeah, let's do that okay. one, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> My banter topic is to describe your favorite piece of media but in the worst way possible. And so the best example that I can give okay. is Lord of the Rings. You could describe it as a man and his gardener go to destroy an evil person's piece of jewelry that they've never met. Okay, I'm going to need I'm going to need a minute on this one. Uh, so and piece of media on. being like a book, a movie, TV, book, like any movie. Okay. Book, a song, movie, video, a but like the song, specific a one. Okay. Poem, yeah. What's your a poem? A piece of graffiti you found that really resonated with you. So I'll do mine. A uh, riddle, a joke. Is, uh, man and his estranged wife go to find their adopted daughter who has magical blood. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. That's like a guessing game, a guessing band. Yeah, someone has to guess what it is. I'm sure oh, Lorna knows. Right. Yeah. Lorna knows. Know, just drive to shut up. Oh, it's Lorna Witcher. Can... It's Witcher. Sarah yeah. knows. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was like, Austin surely knows. No, I, I, I did not know it. I was over my head. I don't know. I was. I don't know what I was thinking, but thinking of your own bant topic. Yeah. I was trying to think of what my question is going to be. Yeah, I'm not on ChatGPT having someone else do it for me though. That'd be ridiculous. That would be something you would do, though. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. I think I have one. Popcorn to Justin. Um, are we? Were we? Were we still trying to uh, guess Josh's, or did we already get that one? No, no, no. Lorna and Sarah got okay. it. I, I'm proud of you, so, Sarah. I, I was, I was concentrating on trying to get my attention, and, and brain wasn't on full uh, attention. Um, a farm kid runs away with an old man using a shady trucker for transport to find someone asking for help. That's, uh, that's Star Wars episode four. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I need help. help. <laughs> I like that. A shady trucker. I like that, yeah. That's a good way to describe Oslo. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. A, a shady trucker and his dog would be even better. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The Shady Chucker and his quiet friend. God, I'm so bad at shit like this. Ugh. That's part of the joy of this. I know. Is. I'm just really like, I can't even decide on which one I want to do. Superb with zero moments notice. I can do mine. Yeah. Okay. Which is a guy with no friends tries to convince other people to join him every single week and hallucinate while rolling rocks around the table. <laughs> Oh, it's what we're doing right now. Yeah. It's what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's play tabletop uh, RPGs. That's good. I mean, I guess that counts. Yeah. I'll just say GCP, which is also your favorite form of media. Yeah, that works, yeah. Same, same, but different. Whoa, whoa, huh. whoa. We're not allowed to say that on air. Strike that from the record. Got it. I'll cut that one. I'll mark it. Yeah, in. let's not advertise for anyone who's not us. God, I can just, go. Yeah, please. All right, Sarah. 
co-workers day-to-day life while navigating love and stupidity. I think I missed I think you lost the first part. Yeah, what was the first word? <laughs> co-workers. Co-workers. Yeah, that's the office. Oh, is it 100%. the office? Yes, it's the office. Okay. Oh, I got one. Go for it. Uh, uh, a blind genius uh, fights his Catholic guilt uh, by <laughs> <nine>. Daredevil. <laughs> uh, that's good. A yeah. Blind genius. Fights his Catholic guilt by what? By night. night. By night. Oh, like by in, in the evening, yeah, Daredevil, yeah. I guess I could three blind mice if you're it, on. Uh, yeah, if you're Brendan. <laughs> I would say six not so close people fight an evil stepbrother. The Avengers? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. Okay, yeah. Okay. Respect it. Um, young girl Twilight. comes into adulthood, or like finds herself and her confidence by riding a funny horse to victory. Racing stripes. Racing stripes. <laughs> 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 I still can't believe we actually sat down and watched that entire fucking movie. Hey, you liked it. I, it I, I, I did. That's why I sat there and watched it. Yeah. It's it was, a, a I, think, movie. I think we just started, we watched that because, like, we talked about how Snoop Dogg was a fly, right? Like, I think that was, mm -hmm. like, the conversation that was just think, like, let's watch that. Yeah. No, Snoop and, Dogg is a dog. Oh yeah, there's uh, the two flies Cheetah Chong, and other right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah Snoop Dogg's not a comedian. I think he's an artist. He is an artist. <laughs> I think I thought that uh, Lindsay Lohan was the the protagonist, and then you guys were like, Hayden no, Panthier. definitely yeah. not Hayden Panthier. And I was like, well, even better. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I mean, How no offense to either Hayden person. Pantier. How I could I forget Hayden Panthier? Lives rent free. In the old noggin. Do you have things She's that do the live? the reason why I watch Bring It On. All or nothing. Exactly. Three. Dance Ooh. Dance Revolution? Was that close? That's the sure. 17th sequel. I hope that one of the bosses we fight can only be defeated via Dance Dance Revolution at some point. A dance off to save the world. It's a, I It's actually a... A Starfinder trope. It's not in Pathfinder at all. I would love to watch Josh do Dance Dance Revolution because I feel like you'd have your dead face while like doing the movie. Oh, no, no, no. Your dead face. I, he doesn't have a dead face. I've not seen him do Dance Dance Revolution, but I've seen him do Just Dance. Same, same. And he's like, very into it and he tries very hard and he usually is grinning the whole time. That's there's good. A, there's a video of me flo that floating around doing Ra Ra Rasputin. That's true. Yeah, you guys have seen Josh do Just Dance. We did it at your house on Halloween. Yeah, but that was we Just Dance. It was I sober? No. Uh, it was Halloween, Sarah. Do you think <laughs> yeah. you were sober? No. Oh my god, I remember that. Okay, yeah, I'm was, there now. Was I outside babysitting somebody else? <laughs> yep. I think that was, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. The, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that was that one. That was your first Halloween, like, in the group. I have lots Baby's of pictures from that. first Halloween. It was your first Halloween. Was that the any... one? <clears throat> was that the one that Julia gave herself a tramp stamp? I gave Julia a tramp stamp. That is that one. We How did the that... shot. I gave Julia the Shawnee Heights T for tramp stamp. I uh, sharpied it onto her, her back. lower back. Yeah. And then took a needle. And... I'm just kidding. I <laughs> wish. If she didn't let me. Today. Hit it with a rock. So that, I want that yeah. to be your second tattoo. Is the Shawnee Heights T <laughs> <T-bird. laughs> On... <laughs> But like wear it like on your chest, like where it would be for a sweatshirt. So it's no, like but in always... the middle of it, I want you to write seven eight five, and have that as a <laughs> across the seven eight five. Lauren, I want you to know every single North Topeka hood room has seven eight five tattoos. Seven eight five. That's like that. That extends all the way to like Baldwin. Like we were. Yeah, I played Pokemon Go with some of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
The 785? 785 gang. Yep. Now we're the 816 or 913, mm, yeah. but the 816. The 816 is always the numbers that call when you like are in trouble or something. I end up you don't I don't answer 816 numbers. You know, we're not doing a very good job of keeping our identities secret here on the internet. Today. I live near Kansas City. I know. I'm pretty sure that's probably slipped at some point we said or another. A lot of very specific things a second ago. But anyways, uh alright. Well, to we the map, uh... to the death and dying rules. Yeah. No, 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 boo, boo. Hopefully, everyone brought bit. their second character. Well, it was a pretty eventful session last week. We kind of oh, started yeah. off with all of you uh, going inside this uh, this mushroom. Actually, no, 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 no. You were already inside the mushroom, right? You defeated the the first wave of enemies, the rust monster and the uh, the spore born um, zombie. And that there was a voice from upstairs that was kind of beckoning you onward. Uh, eventually, you did go and see what it was. And it was this, this uh, Skibrelin, this uh, Myconid necromancer uh, creature. Um, and he was, uh, or I know he was actually, I think he actually was a leshy. Um, but he was a, he was, yeah, he was a necromancer and he had a, a set of zombie minions um, there and there were also some uh, like some sort of Venus flytrap uh, spitting pods up on the wall um, and the whole room was kind of set up as a trap and you guys kind of tried to negotiate your way around it for a while and when that didn't work uh, we resorted to combat which which lasted the rest of the session it was, it was quite eventful um, and culminated in Orpheus um Carving his name basically into this this creature, he was he was uh, he was attacking it one final time, and that was enough to kill it, kill it. and set off its its sort of chain reaction explosion, um, which has knocked out two of our party members. Huang and Orpheus are both dying. Well, Orpheus got picked back up at the end of the episode. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Elnet laid hands on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just Huang this time. Just Huang. So it was, but it was a lot of damage. A lot of damage taken by everybody that was there, basically. Um, I think maybe one or two characters managed to save. Yo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, ton of damage, kind of shockwave, and yeah, Angoric was just outside of the uh, the zone of that explosion. Um, but Krohan took a, a full a face full of damage too. He took a critical hit, which brought him down to uh, I think one HP. And in doing so, he is sort of like surrounded now by this like miasma, like this aura of power, and his eyes are glowing, and he's like, "What's happening to me?" Um, but I think he sees uh, that this he sees this happen to you all, um, and he looks at Huang down on the ground, like knocked unconscious, um, ripped from your bear form. Um, knocked back into um, uh, your 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 dwarf like form. I have a question. Okay. Am I laying like a Victorian? Uh... Yes. Child. Plague victim. Child. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but you've been knocked to the ground, uh, knocked unconscious, uh, kicked out of your bear form, and um, let's see, he is going to. Um, give you back. Uh, thirteen hit points. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, no so one's Krohan dying just, anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Krohan just looks at you and then raises you up off of the ground, um, with a magical spell, and then his aura is going to dissipate off of him. <laughs> And he's gonna like fall back to the ground in his in his still weakened state. And he's gonna say, "What in the name of the Forge Father was that?" And he's gonna look at his hands. I've never done anything like that before. Can I roll esoteric lore on it? Uh, See if I recognize what's going like on. Arcana. Would it be Arcana or religion? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I'm gonna roll some occultism. Okay. Well, let's see. What's what's uh, secret what's rolls? Your bonus? Awesome. Um, if it is, give me a second. 
I assume it's not a creature haunt or whatever, so it's going to be a plus eight instead of a plus ten for esoteric lore. Could be a haunt. Yeah, if it's like a haunt creature or god damn it, what do I write? Haunt curse or creature, then it's a plus ten. Otherwise, it's a plus eight. Could certainly be a curse. Could be a curse. Yeah, that's the one I couldn't remember. So. Okay. Um, I think that. And you I can't are... not get something. That's that's this right. is my yeah. I think that even even with that um, stipulation, like you uh, you know you so. Uh, your character's name, Walkroon. Walkroon has like studied a lot of different kinds of magic. You know, he's kind of very well binder. attuned to um, the types of magic that dwarves normally practice. And he knows that there is this um, sort of emotional, psychic connection to magic that some dwarves achieve through a practice called Rivathun. Sure. Um, which it, it's basically like um, it, it's it's like spirit magic. It's like by being in tune with the spirits around you and like your ancestors and things like that. Some dwarves can achieve some level of magic um, that comes from a source that's not arcane, not divine, but like like this this psychic magic. Um, and it's like you think that uh, maybe Krohan, if he's in the the stressful enough situation, he has like some type of connection to this this form of magic, and he could draw it out, but only Wait, under like extreme like... duress. Would the question, have you achieved Rivathun, like, be a ridiculous question to ask? Is that, like, something that's, like, some people can uh, do it without realizing what it is type of thing? Or, like, would that be something worth actually asking him and be like, oh, yeah, that's what that is? No, I mean, you could definitely ask him. Yeah, so I do. I, uh, Krohan, it seemed almost as though you had achieved uh, some sort of level of uh, Kriv Krivathun? Spirit magic, I... Has that something that you've ever seen before or experienced or are aware of? I'm not a practitioner of that old craft, if that's what you mean. I've never been trained in its ways. Aye, anyone but... in your family, maybe, or something along those lines. Perhaps. This is, uh, my bloodline does go back to the first... Uh, the clan is... <laughs> The first what is people. The... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Veldalo. What's his last name? Well, he's he's a Veldalo, but uh, what what is like the actual clan that you guys are there to see? Um, Tolgo. Talor. 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 He's oh, part okay. of the Talor clan, so he's like he's like, he's like our ancestors are storytellers and history keepers, not not mages. Aye, there but... are those that believe the Talor clan lines go all the way back to the first High King, but it's unsubstantiated. Aye. Well, do you feel all right, at least? Do you feel okay? I mean... As far as... That was quite, that was quite a blow. I think I'm going to need Aye. to rest before we proceed <laughs> forward. Touche. I, I guess I rather mean... Do you feel any different after what just happened there? He says, I think... I think it's gone away. I cannot access it again. Hey, well, it seems but like I... you... may have, uh... helped Hong there. She was down and unconscious, it looked like. And whatever you did, it brought her back. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, let's see if we can't, uh... uh clear this area and... Uh, the top of this mushroom and rest up and heal. I think we're all a little battered up after that. Definitely. I'm resurrected by Jesus. True. And so close to Easter. <laughs> Huang is my new Jesus. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I saw what you did to your old Jesus. Episode title. <laughs> Huang is my new Jesus. That's pretty good. Actually. How many episodes can we have Huang in? All of them. She's popular, I don't have to say. It's a good name, you know? It's a good good name for a title. 
Star of the show. Yeah. Brandon, what ad are you watching over there? Which Bow's in the other room still. Uh, let's see. Greatjobskc.org. <laughs> that was funny. I just turned it on and it played two ads back to back. So <laughs> sick. It's cool. I haven't had any ads yet. Um. All right. Hi. So do we just need to? Josh, what is your healing ability looking like with spells? Do we need to like maybe rest here for an entire evening? Can we do just some normal like healing checks to get some people up? I could do What's... heal checks to heal people. Um, and I have three level one heals still available, so that's three D ten, so who knows what it's gonna end up being, but is the only way into the top of this mushroom through these stairs that we can tell at least can we search around and confirm that or whatever okay i'm sure we could probably set also, something up that would block it out oh i'm on the wrong map are you sure like, what? The... yeah well no i meant like i was on the bottom part of the map not the top part oh, gotcha, gotcha. I was just yeah, like I, was... I feel like this mushroom had a lot more detail last time i was up here wrong map i'm I was dummy on the top and i was like watching the stream and saw that you're just oh on the, like, the bottom yeah on the wrong map? i was like where did why did brennan remove all the tables and stuff it's like, nope he did not i'm a, a lot of work i'm a dummy i think the top of the mushroom will only have positive things we should just go up with very low health oh, you're Is already there... at the top yeah i was gonna say we're already at the top right yeah, yeah we're good okay um I'm just going to kind of go sit in the corner and let Josh do some healing. I'm just going to let my chalice rebuild up a couple times and drink from it because I'm not down that much. And it only takes 10 minutes for it to heal back up. So, so I'm going to, I, and I'm just going to, I can, like, a 10 minute rest doesn't mean that you just have to sit there and do nothing for 10 minutes, right? Like, I can, like, wander around, basically. And that's, like, also equivalent to resting. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that's my, I don't know. If you have to do rests in between these things or not, Josh, but I'm going to wander around for a little bit while I... And I don't know if anybody uh, else can heal, too, so... If I use the heal check ability, it's only... Let me look at the actual details, but I know it's only so often that I can do that. Yeah, it's once an hour, I believe. Yeah. What's the... Are we tired? I mean, obviously we're tired from fighting, but is it, like, in the evening, Brendan? Do you know? Like, would it be logical for um... us to, like, make a camp here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think you guys have kind of, like, uh, traveled for a couple of days. Like, this is kind of the last thing that you kind of found. Um, so if you wanted to rest after this, that would be pretty expected, I think. Okay. I will still use my three level one heals on people and make sure that everyone is within 30 feet of me and do the emanation. Okay. And, okay. you know, and Gorik is going to say, it is time for mass. And prepare the holy, you know. <laughs> I oil. I don't really like a mass. And breads <laughs> and liquor, which should. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> uh, within twenty minutes, Wolkron can heal himself up too. So, but yeah, I will, yeah. I will, I will be a part of the group while this happens. But I'll I will roll a d10 three times and let you know how much you heal. People heal 16 points, so slightly, slightly above average. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna move myself down to signify, like I'm gonna act like my guy's wandering. But Wakroon is now wandering around to signify that I am fully healed. I don't know. I imagine that the people who went down, down maybe are not fully healed yet. But if if need be, every 10 minutes I can guarantee nine hit points by drinking from my chalice. So. Um, if anybody still needs that. Wong! How hurt are yeah. you? What do you say? How hurt are you still? Um, I've got 25 hit points to make up. Holy shit. Um, I was going to say, Krohan is down 33 HP still. All right. I can also do a medicine so, check. So, I. And everything. Yeah, I could pick one per like okay, so let's set up guard. Uh, I and then just... I can guarantee, like I said, I can guarantee nine every ten minutes. Like there's no roll involved. I get three per level every ten minutes the chalice refills. So I can right. guarantee get everyone up in like very short amount of time, basically. 
I could also, I can give at least 12 HP uh, as long as I spend 10 minutes, uh, like, praying, I will get a focus point back and I can use it on someone. I'll spend 10 minutes doing a heal check, too, and the suggested DC is 15, but it's open to DM interpretation on if you think we're in a state of... Yeah, well, are you guys just going to rest here until everyone's back up to full say, HP? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the move. We could sit here and roll checks, but I think we're going to get there, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so maybe it go. takes a couple hours. Is that probably a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, at least at least you, you spend, you know, another hour here uh, while everyone's kind of healing up and occasionally, like, taking a sip out of your, your magical chalice or getting bandaged by one of the healers. Um, I think Huang can also heal people with with uh, met the nature the nature oh. skill. Yeah. Um, right. so. Can I? Mm -hmm. That's cool. I vaguely remember. Yeah, so, like, there's definitely options. Um, but, uh... So like you guys can can kind of get healed up. Um, is there anything that you else you want to do inside this room? Yeah. Once everyone is healed up, I actually while while people are healing, I just I can set my chalice down. So every ten minutes, someone can. Every ten minutes, chug this. You'll feel better. And while people are healing, um, I would walk around to the various um, like stands or whatever the the uh, garden beds that looks like they're going mushrooms and do some do some checks on those to see if I think any of them would be uh, monetarily valuable or valuable and I might not know or valuable in the sense of like you could mix this and this and make this other thing that's like a potion or whatever so just looking for any any form of value or research or anything like that in these uh, beds I'm not gonna go check his paperwork because I feel like someone else like probably yeah, Huang could there. probably yeah like Huang and Karu can probably dive into that but i with my esoteric lore and being a cave uh, dweller all the time might recognize the mushrooms decently and they're probably similar to the ones that were outside so i am going to inspect woke runs chalice to see how it you know you does heal people because he's not a godly man um so <laughs> true. see where he seems to get his power from cool let me see you yeah i'm gonna see if there's anything i can actually give you on that okay that's a word yeah used. uh i would say well while Kroon, you know that like these look like more of the mushrooms that you guys saw kind of like spread like that like, like they had sprung up at different <laughs> places around that that uh tavern so like these are mushrooms that are like toxic or like you know like like aggressive and like you know will grow on top of other things and like sh and like crowd them out um but like you don't see anything here that's valuable okay i uh relay that hi i don't see anything necessarily of any value here but uh it might not hurt huang for you to take a look too um given it's more your profession but uh I don't immediately notice anything of value here. Um, after he's kind of done looking, not to jump ahead, I'm just going to stand at the top of the stairs with my musket out. Just like kind of guard duty while everybody finishes healing and doing whatever they're doing. So, uh, I'll also do... Can I do a... Like anything hidden? Or anything hidden? Yeah. Sure. Nat 20. Nice. nice. I rolled a 29. Okay. So you're looking around upstairs for anything someone else might have missed. Um, and you do find a couple of things. Um, I think maybe there's like a, like a hidden drawer or something on, on this desk uh, with with all of Skibrellin's stuff. Um, and inside you find a tiny hourglass. 
little tiny glass. It's got some sand in it, like sifting from side to side, mm. and um, a, uh, a metal clasp that looks like two hands, like shaking. Um, and in that clasp is like a strand of hair. The ad was making us laugh. Yeah, the ad behind. Oh. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> I've got five minutes before my next one, supposedly. I don't know, they seem to be on two minute intervals. Yeah, it's constantly. Thanks, you too. Do you to share this knowledge with you? Yeah, of course I do. Um, so Cobra's there next to the desk, so whenever uh, Orpheus is rummaging around, uh, Cobra would like to detect magic uh, around his rummaging to see if any of those objects are in fact magical. And that's just a spell, right? Uh, yeah. It's you a just kind of zoom that all over. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, the the hourglass the hourglass like the it looks like that's magical um, it's it's emanating like a small aura of magic um, do you get additional information like you like focus in on it and get like schools of magic mm -hmm. and things like that no that was first edition or the was that first edition or is that just how does it work no it needs to be heightened in order to learn the rank or level okay um, or like uh, you get no information beyond the presence or absence. Okay. So it's more of just like whether or not it's magic. Mm -hmm. It's more okay, useful so... if we're like in a dungeon and we just have that going to yeah. find the fun stuff. So, I mean, obviously that's, um, that looks like that's magical. Um, you also see it looks like the clasp. I think that's also magical. The chalice will ping, yep. too. Ping. Chalice will ping. Um, the staff that Ski Brillin, like, dropped on the ground um, appears to be magical. Um, and you also find some um, sort of a... Uh, I don't know if they're... I, I guess they'd be magical. Um, oh, can you still hear me? You're still here. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I can see that your Discord is dying. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I was going yeah, full exactly. screen Brendan to see the ad. But then... <laughs> All right, so maybe I'll turn off my camera for now. But uh, okay, so yeah, there's also um, included in Ski Brillin's notes, it looks like at least two ritual formulas that are emanating Ooh. faint magic. That's cool. Um, Josh, were you serious about investigating my chalice? Yes. Okay. In which case, I... What would you want to roll on it? Because I think it's appropriate that I do the secret check for you to see what you would learn about the chalice. Because I know things about the um, chalice. I would roll a religion check, which may tell me nothing. But okay. I... What's your religion bonus? Plus eight. Okay. I... Yeah, this is going to be funny if it works. Man, I don't even have to be here anymore. Uh, yeah, okay. So you're, like, looking at the chalice, and you can kind of see, like, when it's just sitting there, you can see the bottom. There's, like, a bluish liquid that's kind of, like, slowly filling up over time. And you, you have, that, that makes sense. That's what you've been seeing this whole time. But you're kind of looking at the outside of it and, like, the symbols on it, and you, like, it almost looks like astrological signs... Uh, that are associated with the god of like mothers and newlyweds, but you also right. see like a sea dragon on the side of it. Wow! And it's and you like based on the way that Wakroon uses it, you assume that he actually has no idea about that. Like that's not something that he is even like necessarily aware of. But like it's more of like a religious thing that you would bring out. Like there's probably more going on. But like you do notice that there's some symbols on there that you're like, I recognize that. Like that's the astrological signs of the mother and newlyweds. Um, so, and then like as us as players, you remember like I think it's my opening story is like where I found it and like got out and like my whole kind of some of the backstory um, with it and stuff. But uh, 
Yeah. Like, all that Angoric thinks to himself when he discovers all this knowledge is, damn, this bitch is into astrology. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like we've talked about it. Like Brendan and I, have t I mean, I've, I think we've all talked about it. Like how funny it is that, like, like in, in our in the real world, believing in that kind of stuff is dumb. Well, to me at least. But like to these characters, like, like they know that's real. You know, like there's actually is gods, and there is like these are all like actual beings and stuff. So it's people that believe in them or whatever. But um, yeah, I, to be fair, Walker did just find it, so he might not even know what he's using. But he does like to use it, so. Yeah, it's a okay. fantasy game. There are gods in astrology, astrology times. It's a, it's a crazy yeah. made-up place. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you for this knowledge. Uh -huh. um, and maybe you rolled bad and that was all a fake. I don't know. Well, you yeah. would just No, you find... You, you would, if you roll poorly enough, you get bad information. That's how oh, recall knowledge works. Right. If it's a critical failure. Yeah. Um, and then I would also like to do a religion check for identify magic on the hourglass. Mr. DM, sir. Okay. <laughs> What's your bonus? Plus okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you got a natural 20. Hello. Nice. Uh, Except uh, the hourglass. Laura sneezing. No, that was Tucker Barton. Oh, Tucker. Okay. <laughs> it sounded much too robust to be Percy. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay. So this item is something called a Grim Sand Glass. Grim? Uh, uh huh. Okay. Like brothers. I heard Grim, but Grim made more sense. So. Grim, like the Grim Reaper. Um, but one, one bulb of this tiny hourglass contains black sand and the other contains white. After even a few grains pass from one side to the other, it reverses its flow to keep the two sides in equilibrium. Basically, um, let's see. You attach it to armor or a weapon. And if you attach it to armor... You get resistance two to negative energy. And if you attach it to your weapon, it's after you cast a necromancy spell by activating the sand glass, your strikes with this weapon deal an additional 1d4 negative energy damage until the end of your next turn. I think this should go to woke, not woke run Orpheus. Yeah, it's got Orpheus written all over it. That is cool, yeah. Or we could roll off for it if someone else wants it. Just keep it interesting. Roll off. I had it. I didn't even use it, so you guys can have it. It's called a grim sand glass. You good, Brendan? I guess. And then it's just something to keep in mind. I'm assuming it's in the gear. Yeah, my nose is just bleeding. Okay, oh, I was no. going to say, you sound like you were about to sneeze or something. Do we need to take a pause? No, I'm alright. Did you eat Thanks. some spicy food? As long as blood clots are supposed to look like that. <laughs> blood clots can look a lot of different ways. You're not supposed to see the blood clots. <laughs> oh, okay. You pull it out like this. Never mind. Never mind. No gross people out. <laughs> I can turn the camera back on. I don't follow your heart, man. You turn. You didn't even turn the camera off because of that, though, did you? That was just no. good timing. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I mean, as far as good timing goes. Weird. Cool. Did you? Did we figure out how to put that on? Something. I just said, I think you have to be like a crafting check to figure out how to put that on something. Oh yeah, it might. No, it's just, be, you can. You just, just to fix it. Yeah. Uh, I. I I would guess it has magnets attached to it. Yeah. How you do they work? Magnets. Yeah. Magic. Magnetism really is just magic magnets. still. So. Cool. So do we... Is, are we done being awake? Do we want to... Do, we, uh, do we want to do a yeah. sleep cycle now? Someone stay on guard and we do shifts of sleeping I or something? I love a sleep cycle. Yeah. I've heard Brendan likes them too when he can get them. Me too. 
Yeah, if we could find one. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys want to camp out here, uh, you can. Uh, keep in mind that you haven't explored the lower floor yet either. You just kind of came straight up here. We didn't even... Was there stuff that even seemed like it was... It just kind of seemed like a blank room with rocks in it. Was there, like... I mean, I guess we haven't explored it, so we don't know. But there wasn't, like, any, like, furniture or anything like that down there, was there? Uh, yeah. So the so this, this giant mushroom stalk has been hollowed out. Uh, creating coarse, striated walls made out of exposed, finger-thick hyphae, like the membrane between the, the, the mushroom. Sure. Uh, the interlace about 10 feet above to create a ceiling. Uh, the strands near the center have been unraveled and woven into a spiraling staircase. Other ceiling strands are woven into a, uh, it says, leshy-sized hammock that hangs about five feet off the ground. An assortment of boulders with marks and and bites out of them are and are strewn about the room. All right. Okay. So who thinks that they finish up whatever they're doing upstairs first? So I feel like I was done pretty quick because I didn't need healing and did a quick check. I, so, okay, I like who wants to go down the, there? I feel like it would make the most sense for Elnet or Huang to go down there to rescue their animal companions. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, I think both then. I don't think we should send one person down. Yeah. I need Two my girls. emotional support pangolin. That's fair. A master and an apprentice. Always. Do. All right, I'll stay at the top of the stairs and guard with the rifle. Aim down the stairs. But yeah, if you guys want to go down and check it out. Yeah, I'll go down um, and get Silver Forge. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you go back downstairs. You should still be able to see, hopefully, on the other map what's going on. Yeah, you yep. just scroll down a little bit. Um, so there is kind of a, a very crude hammock sitting there um, and some rocks, kind of, like you said, kind of around the room that look like they've got bites and stuff taken out of them. I feel like Scabrellin could have been our friend. If he, <laughs> if he was tried. a hammocker. I, yeah, yeah, we I tried. tried our hardest. Well, we didn't. Well, we tried our hardest to start with, and at the end, we tortured him to death. <laughs> One of us did. <laughs> That's true. I'm into it. I think it's funny. I'm I into was, it. It wasn't torture. It was mm. just dessert. Sure. Oh, so he deserved it. It could have been both. Ah. He earned it. You see or Kato is dose. I mean, he did yeah, he asked for time. it. <laughs> did you see what he was... Never mind. <laughs> oh, God. Never mind. Uh, anyways. <laughs> yeah, so if you take a look around downstairs, um, yeah, the only thing interesting really is, is that hammock, which you could take a look at, um, or you could examine those rocks. Um, I bet the rocks were what the metal things were eating. I... Yeah, I say I doubt, I doubt anybody has like mining lore or anything fun like that, right? Esoteric. But I'm not down there, so. No, but you're right. That would be fun. <laughs> mm. It's Baron. Baron I do have trying lore. to use his fisherman profession over and over again. I do have lore cave. Pretty close. And I'm pretty sure that fisherman thing came in handy at least once. At least once, yeah. I think Kwong and. Uh, are the only ones there, so I yeah. leave it to you there. Yeah. Um, I need to step away for just a minute. Hubby needs to be taken care of, so I will be back in a second. Okay. I'm gonna get the puppy. <laughs> Have you guys ever was the last you saw? Game? Don't shoot the puppy. Pause. I didn't hear anything, but don't shoot the puppy. Can you repeat that sentence? Have you ever played the Flash game? Don't shoot the puppy. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe it's like with a cannon. I remember the one where you shot the bow and arrow at the guy with the, the apple on his head. Yeah, same. Yeah, same I remember the one where you throw a shoe at, at George Bush. Yeah, that, was <laughs> a good one. that was a good one. Man, I played Staggy the Boy Scout Slayer. Flash games bring me back to Dylan's house. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. <sighs> Man. When you had a computer room nope, that you guys yeah. hung out in? It was we the living room with his laptop. laptop. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Say, houses, 
You kids probably don't remember, but houses used to have a computer room where the only computer that was in the house sat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not that. We're not that young. I had a computer yeah. room. But there was also oh, this was like middle we, school. We didn't even have a, like a full like. It was more in like the stair landing area was where the computer was. That's true. Man, that computer was possessed at the end of its life. That was great. It got it got struck by lightning. All right, it was. <laughs> I think my computer could take your computer. <laughs> I bet it could. At, like at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another app. Iconic. Okay. Um, so, do you guys do any exploring uh, downstairs? I'm sure Elmat does. I don't know if he would have anything to roll down there, so it might be Huang doing rolls. Yeah, Huang, you want to do some rolls? Yeah. Yeah. What else we got? with fortitude right <laughs> what do you so you're trying to like search downstairs so yeah. probably not a fortitude save maybe <laughs> like nature i would think would probably be one of your better roles to it's like see same. if you so same fuck it sure. well, i'm just, I'm just oh, what, what are you what are you looking for yeah, yeah like like oh, there's the rocks bit what? out of them or like you could invest, I don't know, to see if there's anything of interest down there, nature-wise, maybe? Yeah, I thought, that, I thought it was the general, what is interesting, search. You could just look around, but uh, tell me what you're looking at. Like, a, you don't need to roll anything, just tell me what you're looking for. Don't tell me anything, but tell me what you're looking for. When we don't know what we're looking for, we're just looking for what's interesting. No, I said I don't, you don't have to roll anything, just tell me what you're looking for. What are you looking at? There's not very much stuff down there. What are you looking at? There's the rocks, or there's the hammock, or there's like just like the general high fay, right, Brendan? Like that's the three oh, major things. There's also a ceiling. Sorry, my computer's a little too zoomed in. I was trying to move you so you was obvious. I can, I can help. Um. Or I can. I can. What is this? The hammock. You move the hammock? right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me go look around the hammock. All right. So, I mean, the hammock is like attached to the wall with like a, a heavy bolt that it looks like it has maybe some writing on it. And then um, nestled in the hammock is a uh, a jade cat statuette. A small <laughs> no way. No way. Way. <laughs> nice. I know what Dylan and I are thinking, and Brendan. <laughs> You don't know what I'm thinking. Well, I'm what I'm thinking a... is... <laughs> that was actually my second guess, so... Yeah. I'm actually just uh, trying to learn Sardaukar while you guys play this game. Dreams are messages from the deep. Don't know what that means. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so do you... So with the information I gave you, dear, what, what do you do? Um, I consult my comrades. We're all upstairs. You can yell out to us. Alan, that's the only one that's actually down here with you, but he is uh, taking care of a spaded animal. Alan's I... eyes roll to the back of his head and he collapses for a second. <laughs> he's, he's commuting with a higher power. I either yell through the walls, I don't know if they hear me, Hi, Huang! What is it? Did you find something? Huang, are you okay? Why did, what? Why did Angoric sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Angoric! What the fuck was that? Huang yells and asks if a jade cat means anything to anybody. Hi, I can't say I know off the rip, but you should definitely bring it up. I don't think that I would say off the rip. I apologize for that. That's... But you said it's bolted to the wall, the jade cat is? The, I... I think the jade cat's hammock. in the hammock. The hammock is bolted to the wall with writing on the bolt, but there's just like a jade cat statuette in the hammock, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I pick that up. Hi, it instantly kills you. It's too bad. That's brutal. Okay. Cool. 
we could do some checks on it when you're done. Maybe look into that <clears throat> bolt writing, though. That'd be cool. Yeah, who writes on a bolt? What's yeah, that there's not a, there can't be enough space, right? Like it's it's like a standard bolt. Is there like enough get space? Hammered into a wall. No one's yeah. gonna be able to read it. You have to. You have to. It's That's like a post. It's it's post bolt writing for sure. Like after uh, they're done hammering, then they write on it. Brendan, when was this writing made? Can we tell? Uh huh. Was it pre or post bolting? Right. Is there some <laughs> way to be able to translate that? Um, it just looks like, uh, maybe, like, if you look at the, you're looking at, like, the bolt, um, it's, like, maybe just, like, some magical runes or something. Like, if you look at it more closely. Uh, it's a trap, question mark? It's a trap. Who trapped a hammock? I, I don't know. A, a fucking mushroom mushy. A hammock's already a trap. Touché. I think we should try to collect the hammock so we can use it later. Ooh. But it's bolted to the wall. You can unbolt it. With what? I, Huang, call us down. Your hand. I brought my tools. <laughs> I have a socket <laughs> wrench set. Yeah, we're like full-on adventurers. Before. Walker and pulls out his pocket knife. <laughs> he pulls out his 5 8 wrench. Uh, make an athletics check. Do you have athletics? I do. Amen. Oh, that'd be a 15. 15, okay. So you kind of pull on it, and it seems like it's kind of stuck. That's what she said. Wow. Um, okay. Hey, Huang, do you need any help down there? <laughs> I got it. I, she spits in her hands and tries again. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure she is fine. Hi, did you just use spit to make it harder, easier to? Good luck. <laughs> easier to pull on something. Yeah, I yeah. That's a twenty. Hey. Okay, oh. twenty is enough. So uh, when you pull the climbing bolt, uh, the, yeah, the 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 bolt free, um, the rope oh. and attached hammock kind of like shrink back into the bolt. Cool. Portable hammock. So many uses. <laughs> we right, can I... actually. I guess it's not true. It's it's just the just the rope that was like tying up the hammock shrinks back into the bolts. It's just like a it's a climbing bolt that has basically the equivalent of a fifty foot rope attached to it. Cool. Wow. But the hammock is just a normal hammock. The hammock is just a normal hammock, and now it's not tied up to anywhere. There's nothing normal about a hammock, okay? A standard hammock? <laughs> Exotic by nature. <laughs> that might be, but standard? Okay. Saying a lot of things. What are All you right. Doing? Anyways, so I got We're... this cool ass <laughs> hammock. Cool ass bolt. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got standard really hammock. <laughs> Is there a, a name for the thing, Brendan? The climbing bolt? Yeah, uh, is that what it's called? It's called a climbing bolt. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's in... Oh, my God. It's a 15 gold piece item. Uh, Sarah, you should be able to add that to your sheet. Wiki, wiki. Uh, the jade cat is also called a jade cat. I will not look that up. Let's see. Is it a... Oh, never mind. Should we not look that one up? I don't even know it exists. Mm -hmm. That's true. Austin is asking if I should look it up. <laughs> I mean, you, you can try and figure out what it is first. That's what. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to do. <clears throat> Are you done exploring down down below, Quang? Um, Quang, like looks all around and touches a lot of surfaces. Like she's window shopping. Um, but doesn't so far I'm not I, I don't think I'm seeing anything else super exciting unless you want me to check out each of these rocks individually the only thing else down there are a bunch of rocks that look like they have bites taken out of them bites bites can I look at the arcade on those bites uh huh 
Okay. Would you like me to roll something? Sure. What do you want to roll? <laughs> I don't know. Um. I don't know. <laughs> Another uh-huh. nature roll, I guess? I don't... Okay. Is arcade oh, the technical my. term for Ooh, a bite mark? Natural 20. <laughs> All right. Um. So, yeah. So these. So there's maybe like a couple of rocks here that look like they've got a little bit of like silvery dust like leading up to them. And if you take a look at the bite marks, they look like they were made by um like an insectoid mandible. Um, like something insectoid was trying to bur- burrow its way into these rocks. Um, it looks like there's veins of of uh, of minerals inside of them. In fact, it looks like uh, they're cold iron ores, basically. Oh, cool. Are these termites? I think it was the things we fought when we first came in. Yeah, they were metal eating. It was a uh, rust monster. Yeah. I'm going things with termites. Of... <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm not down there, so I don't know. All right, can I? So you said there's like dust of the ore on there? Yeah, it's just, just, just there's like little bits of it. Like that's what you spotted um, that kind of led you to believe that there's like cold iron inside of these these rocks. But they're pretty uh, pretty heavy. It, you'd have to basically, if somebody that has a tool or something to break these open, you guys think you could take some some cold iron away from these, this, uh, these ores. Otherwise, they're just like these boulders that you'd have to lug around. How heavy are these boulders? <laughs> uh, there's two boulders, and they weigh they weigh five bulk a piece. I could carry one. <laughs> Ride these babies for miles. Oh wait, never mind. Encumbered is seven. Max is twelve. I would be encumbered, but I could carry one. Oh, I'm so not max, going to. You could just carry both of them. Well, I already have six on me. Just push them around. You said I need something, need something to break them. Like yeah, a weapon looking... or something. Yeah, like if somebody had a tool, like a like a mining tool, you Ooh, could probably. I wonder, like... is there a pickaxe and a climbing kit? No, there's a hammer, but not a pickaxe. Fuck. I mean, you do you, boo. <clears throat> is there a material uh, in or around this house that is stronger than these rocks? That's all it takes. Let's keep pushing. I mean, not necessarily. <laughs> Maybe. The dead creatures are still here, right? Can we yep. open their jaws and smash their jaws <laughs> into the cold iron? <laughs> <laughs> Once our god of crafting comes back, we can have him spend some time to take our weapons, such as my hatchet and my stickleberry stickler, code it in the teeth of the creatures, and then we can beat the fuck out of these rocks until we get enough cold iron to do something valuable with it. What if I use aqueous blast to erode it? <laughs> now, how many actions do you think that that would take? To aqueous <laughs> At least five more than normal. Yeah, that's probably true. Freaking episode. It, it is unfortunate that the one character that this could most apply to last. Oh <laughs> <laughs> He's on the ground, eyes rolled back into his head, yeah. foaming. To be fair, there's a lot of other stuff that you guys can work on um, figuring out or identifying. Um, does, wow. Does... does um, a Karu do anything additional with these scrolls? Does he get, have any? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Good I'd, shout. Yeah, I'd, I'd just be kind of waiting, but I didn't. I wasn't sure whether or not um, I could learn uh, ritual spells. Is that something that anyone can do? Because yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm not like. I don't learn my spells. I am S- technically like a sorcerer, where I just have innate spells. I don't really honestly know how rituals work. I can trick I magic items. Edition. I'm looking into that right now because that's... I can examine a magic item I normally couldn't use in an effort to fool it and activate it temporarily. So I don't know if that is going to come into ha- like any... Magic items are like Wakroon's shtick, mm-hmm. but Austin doesn't have any idea how they work. So. Yeah, and honestly, Karu would be more interested in the uh and like the items like the cool like occult like supernatural stuff mm-hmm. um, but scrolls are interesting attempt to check 
Isn't that... Oh, I have to... We don't know what they do, right, Brendan? Or do we know what they do? We know their name. Which, like, what are you asking about? Like the scrolls that uh, Karu has. Like, do we know what they... Like, there's Not a line of... You, okay. You just did... You just... You just, like, detected that they they had ma they're magical, okay. basically. Okay, yeah. Because part of the trick magic item thing that I have says you must know what activating the item does or you cannot attempt to trick it. So, if we get to that point, then I can maybe do something with it. If that is just to say, if we come into a situation where we figure out what they do, but know that no one can use them, I might be able to trick them into allowing us to use them, which is just super cool. <gasps> Excuse me. And they're just called scrolls? Like if I was going to uh, look up the rules? The rituals. Rituals, excuse me. Um, so, so from what I'm seeing, um, they, it, basically, rituals require a group of people to cast them. Uh, one person is the primary caster. Other people are secondary casters. And you have to have, like, ranks in either arcana, occultism, religion, um... Well, just one of those three things. You have to, so, so you have to have ranks in one of those three things. Um, basically, and it's dependent on a little bit on which ritual it is. Um, I don't think there's any reason you couldn't decipher what he wrote here, except for maybe what he speaks. Oh, that's so cool. What language he was using. Oh, yeah, let's check up on languages, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think he had a, a number of languages that he could speak, if I remember correctly. That's not is his character sheet at okay oh yeah because he knew he knew uh druidic and that was what some of the uh, the stuff had been written down in so it's probably not something that Kalru could read but it is something that that uh maybe somebody else in the group can read druidic yes i'm gonna bring it over to to huang uh, as she didn't uh, look druish <laughs> Um, Justin, while you were gone, um, Huang went downstairs, found a magic bolt in the wall next to a hammock that when she took out uh, was 50 foot of rope, like in a magic bolt, which was pretty cool. And then also picked up the hammock. And there's also chunks of rock down below that have bite marks in them that we assume were bite marks from the rust monster things that we fought. And inside of them are cold iron. We don't really have a way to get the cold iron out as of right now. That's a later problem, potentially. Um, I need you to smack it. Yeah, so we need to figure out some way to get that out if we want to hold onto that cold iron or we try to carry boulders around. And now we are looking into scroll and ritual stuff that Karu found. Yes, but... Um, I mean, we I have... Thinking. No, yeah, go. We, go, we were go thinking ahead. you had a solution to this problem, so... We're going back um, I do have a war hammer that would do blood bludgeoning damage. Um, if Love it. That would potentially work. Just Thor it. <laughs> I'm sure it's got a hardness. It you does want me have to a bring the hammer down? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they're lining up. Yeah, I mean, you can roll. <laughs> <on that. laughs> <Whoa. laughs> Sorry. You're good. Um, yeah, I mean, you can attack it if you want. It does have a, a hardness and HP. Okay. <clears throat> I will say AC is 10. AC is 10? Mm hmm. Okay, let me. One second. I'm kind of moving stuff around. Uh, Warhammer, where are you at? Okay, plus 7. Uh, first roll is a 19, so that'll hit, and it is a d8. It's technically a crit on it. DC 10, you rolled a 19, right? 10 or higher. So you gotta get 20 oh, yeah, to yeah. your crit. Oh, yeah, yeah, 19 total. Uh, well. uh for, uh, uh, 7 bludgeoning, is that enough? So 7 Would points of damage doesn't go through higher hardness than that uh, what can i tell what the hardness is on this thing uh for argument's sake we'll say it has hardness 10 
I would have to do max damage to even do that. Warhammer only does 1d8. Okay. So, um, uh, could Sarah cast her spell and increase the power of bludgeoning weapons in an area and beat down one rock? Eh? Yes. Eh? You could, you could get a critical hit on it, too. Touche. I could. How much? Um, I would, I would, I would, you guys could also, like, in this case, like, do I mean, an athletics check if you want to just try and, like, leverage it. Like, maybe, like, throw it off of the edge and, or, like, do something else, you know, like, break it open without no, but that using does a tool. Turn. Yeah. Um, uh, and we could potentially try and aim it to land on, like, something that is, like... Aim for another rock. Some, yeah, some or something that would have more of an edge, almost... Like how my great axe comes to that edge. If we could land it on an edge to where more of that force is in one spot rather than just like a flat rock or something. Could I exploit a vulnerability on the boulder and remove its. <laughs> Never mind. I'm being. Nope, finish your thought. No, I was. It was we can't exploit a vulnerability no, no, no. on a. a and, and, and bypass its hardness. It's not a thing. <laughs> but I thought it was. No, not. That, that it yours. turns out this boulder is vulnerable to jokes. <laughs> Too bad oh. you aren't funny. <laughs> oh, man. Too bad no one actually likes you. Your giant, not giant, your normal sized small velociraptor that's fully made of metal can't just bite through it, can it? I don't think so. I'm telling you, we need to rip the teeth out of the other thing. Sneak attack! Have have your uh, guy go stand out there, and we'll drop the boulder on him. He's made of metal. There you go. Stand right here. It is very important that we spend, you know, as much time as possible <laughs> trying good? to figure out how to get the metal out of this boulder. One more thing. I was just putting that in the notes, Brendan. <laughs> Dylan, what else do you want to try? I would like to go by to the faster and he answered Austin about my ability to increase bludgeoning damage. Yeah. I think that would have been valid. I don't think there's any reason it wouldn't. It's just if that's what we, we want to do. We can still do that if you'd like to do it. But I we would can like still to do it. Of the monster that was eating the, the metal. Okay. Um, just one bulk of like a piece of it. Uh, and just keep casting telekinetic projectile at the rocks. Just try and saw it, saw it apart slowly. I just put bludgeon it with a harder material with a good enough velocity to because it does 3d6 so i think i can get past the the 10. Okay. at least, at least a couple time. times yeah yeah, yeah yeah but i'd like to just take 20 on that okay just... it's a cantrip so you can keep using it over and over again <laughs> yeah okay uh yeah so after we'll say after 10 minutes of just like sawing away with this this the uh, the mandibles from this rust monster <laughs> you yeah. just like you you guys and during the combat like separated its head from its body so you just like pick it up and then you're just like spinning it around over and over again like letting it like cut through cut through cut through and you eventually break free um uh, a cold iron chunk from each of these rocks so you've got just this chunk uh they're worth 10 gold pieces but you should actually be able to find them in your items maybe cold iron chunk i would I like do see to the word have chunk, so, yeah. because i can utilize it for needle darts and it will Ooh. utilize the effect of cold iron oh that's pretty cool it's a useful material to have that's kind of why i wanted to get it um but we have five how many do we yeah we got five, five two here. oh we got two, nah, two there's only two. yeah there's only two chunks that uh, of oh, cold okay. iron that are worth okay. keeping Two each or two for the group? Two total. <laughs> um, well, I've got enough carry weight that I can put one on me. Oh, wait, actually, I think I do. I would like I to have them, like I said. Yeah. How much does it say they weigh? It just says bulk large. I don't know what that means until I add it. Though. L is light. L is light. Oh, yeah, light. Ten, ten light objects weigh one bulk. Okay, so yeah, I should be able to easily... I mean, whoever. I don't have to take it. I guess if it's light, then Kauru, you can just take it since you sought it out. It doesn't really matter. So. I think Angoric asked for one. Yeah, Angoric. Yeah. yeah. 
And, uh, yeah. No, I'll give one to, to Elnat as the crafter. Seems like he'd appreciate a good material. Oh, yeah. I think, are, are there other ore veins inside the room, or was it just the only one? That was that was it. Uh, was I was hoping we were up there so we could spend ten minutes debating how best to <laughs> get the other medals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cold iron rocks check. Back to scrolls. Yep, yep back to scroll scrolls. All right, Karu, you got the chunks now. Figure out how these scrolls work too. It's a it's a really weird system. I'm into it. But you can craft well, so like the, you just. The material is, is cold iron, right? Uh, and you can craft a certain number of, like, weapons or armor from them based on the gold equivalent of what you have. So you need at least uh, 20 silver pieces or two gold pieces worth of cold iron to craft a low-grade cold iron weapon. Okay. But these are um, worth 10 then, a piece, right? Those 10 are worth gold 10. Pieces? So we can mm -hmm. make a lot so of... Little... You have a few tries. Uh, it does cost an additional two silver pieces worth per bulk. So if you're making like a warhammer versus like a or, or or like a shield or armor or something compared to like a rapier, like it takes more material. I assume that's something that we have to do like at a forge. Like we would have to wait till we get back to do probably. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're probably not going to be able to like <laughs> forge break out your metal pocket armor. forge. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, and we'd want to make a versatile, uh, a versatile weapon, rather, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, out of this stuff. Cool, but very yeah. cool. It is, it is an option. Or you just sell it. Or you just sell it and then buy a cold iron weapon. It's very cold. Gang <laughs> <laughs> gang. <Bye. laughs> uh, title of the episode: Man, that's cold. Dot dot dot. Iron. Iron. Um, so Should do we hold give iron us on his hip? Hold iron on his hip. Man, that's a song I can get stuck in my head. Shit. <laughs> but Brendan, you said that we each need to, like, there's a bunch of different checks that could be used for these scrolls. So I think we all want to do. Uh, I think step one is just figuring out what it is, right? And then if we actually do the ritual, then everyone can be involved, right? Yeah, so uh, I'll say that um, it's written in Druidic, so Huang could read it. Mm. Huang, do you want to read the rituals? <laughs> no. Your yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, so um, he has two separate rituals inscribed here, and they are um, different levels. So I'll read you the lower level one first. Um, the first ritual is called Create Mycoguardian. Oh, okay. Um, and it's basically the equivalent of a Create Undead ritual, but it's it's specific to um, the fungus that he's cultivating here and being able to animate another one of those. That's that Sporeborn, the creature that you fought downstairs, was a Mycoguardian. Mm, nice. Um, so he only succeeded one time. In, in the other ones, he just raised regular zombies, unfortunately. Um, but he was trying to create more of those myco guardians. So, um. I'm just picturing yeah. the characters from Baldur's Gate. There you go. Basically, I mean, like, uh, those are myconoids. Myconids. Yeah. Um, so similar. Um, but, anyways. Yeah, that's uh, what I had in my head, too. <laughs> <laughs> they're really cool. Uh, Baldur's Gate does yeah. a really good job of fleshing those out. But, um,. So basically, this is a ritual. Uh, you transform the target into an undead creature, um, and the level is dependent on the spell level, basically, that you're using there. Um, like, and, and the quote-unquote gold in cost of materials. So like the cheapest casting of it only costs 15 gold pieces worth of materials, um, and you can create a zero-level creature. No. Uh, or you know, but then like you you can you can spend more and more. So if you spend three hundred gold, you create a level four creature. Um, but anyways, it's it's a very specific ritual that creates these like fungus myco guardians, um, and the primary spellcasting uh, ability for it is actually nature. So it's <laughs> modified from the normal create undead spell, um, but it's because it's it's uh, 
it specifically like modified so that he can use it to create these with spores. So the ritual uses uh, nature and requires you to be an expert before you can attempt it. So we're going to hold on to this and like use that weight down the line. Like the material, I guess I'll wait till you read the other one before I start asking how they actually work as far as materials are concerned. I just want to yes, make sure we get everything we need here before we leave in case we need it like, you know, in a book or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't honestly know about the material cost, so we may have to come back to that yeah, yeah, later yeah. on. If we think we're going to um, use it. Mm -hmm. But we'll figure that part out. Um, the other is a ritual called reincarnate. No shit. All right. Wow. That's crazy. What's that one do? Yeah. Uh, walk walk yeah. me through that one in as yeah. much detail as you can. <laughs> so reincarnate, um, for longtime fans of Pathfinder or, or D and D know it's a spell that you can use that will bring someone back to life, but not in their original form. You're reincarnating them into a new body, like Gage from Pet Cemetery. Sure. Or Jesus. Um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, but anyways, you, 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 you call forth the target soul and attempt to incarnate into a brand new body. Um, it's not returning the original body. You only need a small portion of the creature's remains to, to attempt this spell. Yeah, like DNA. Uh, they must have died within the last week, so you have a time limit, you know. Otherwise, the ritual fails. Um, also, Phrasma, the, the the Lady of Graves, can decide that the target's time has come and the soul doesn't wish to return and the ritual will automatically fail. Uh, but if the ritual is successful, the target's new body has a random ancestry, so you get to roll 1d20 and basically <laughs> pick randomly from this list. Um... But this variant of the spell uh, has a result of one through eight. The new body will be of a common ancestry. On a result of nine through 13, it will be an uncommon or rare ancestry. But on a 14 through 20, the target's new body is that of a leshy. <laughs> oh, shit. The ritual has been modified to reincarnate folks into a leshy form. That, that tracks. That's insane. Imagine in like two books from now, someone dies and we choose to reincarnate them and they have no choice but to come back as a leshy. <clears throat> I love it. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Karu. Imagine what that would be like. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> wild. <laughs> so, could we purposely kill Karu and then re? He is you can no fucking wrong. try. <laughs> <laughs> could he voluntarily <laughs> die? Not yet. Yeah, that's, so cool. that's a little risky. Like I said, there's some situations where the body doesn't get to come back, or the, the yeah. soul doesn't get to come back. So it's that's also we'll just we'll just say beforehand. It's also a level three ritual. Um, they were level three. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I think we probably need to be an expert in whatever the casting thing is. Yeah, it's it, this is also nature. Yeah. Uh, requires you to be a nature expert, but the secondary checks are occultism and religion. So I got one of those. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be difficult if one of the spellcasters is the one you're trying to reincarnate, though. Let's go try to just waste this on the guy that we killed upstairs. Let's reincarnate him. But that's the thing, though, is this is just a this is a ritual. So like, I mean, I don't think you need like. Oh, we just keep you doing don't it? like use it up. Yeah. Let's you just start reincarnating shit. That's not against any of you guys' religions, right? Start bringing shit back. I, I, I worship a dead god. <laughs> shit. I would be against abusing this power. What about practicing this power? Let's see. Yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Testing it once. Practice twice. Same thing. Same thing. You gotta wait a day in between. Uh, that's sick. Hold on to that, Karu. Rituals also have, like, because it's a skill check. There's, like, failure. got, like, exactly. Like, a, like a critical success means that you reincarnate the target into a new adult body, fully functional. It has the same spells prepared and points in their pools as the original did when it died. Um, but a regular success means that the target 
is reincarnated, but the new body only has one HP remaining, no spells prepared or any points in any pools, and it takes time to adjust to their new body, leaving them clumsy to, drained to, and enfeebled to for the for an entire week. Jesus oh, Christ, we imagine. These conditions cannot be removed or reduced by any means until that full week has passed. Insane. Failure Can you imagine doing that in the middle the of a dungeon? Oh, it's so cool. Oh, you guys got it. Failure means you fail to reincarnate the target, but the materials for the spell are wasted. Uh, critical failure means the target's soul becomes trapped in an unintelligent animal creature of the GM's choosing. <laughs> That's fucking I horrible. Can't. I love how Watch. failure is just like nothing, but critical failure is like bad. <laughs> It's like, it's just, while trapped, the target has an intelligence score of one and cannot use any of their own abilities or communicate with you in any way, shape, or form. I just know that it's horrible. Like, I wouldn't, if it was a worm, we could just get rid of it because I wouldn't love them if they were still a worm. God. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of it. Being a just kill it. <laughs> Put it out of its misery. Intelligence one. Couldn't be me. It is me. No, I have intelligence the one zero. Talking. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so those are fun. Those are fun. Those rituals are cool. Um, you guys identified what the hourglass does. Um, the, you haven't cat. identified the clasp or the jade cat. Um, can I roll I esoteric lore on the cat? Sure. Plus eight, Plus my eight? friend. Unless it's a Ooh. creature, curse, or haunt. Then it's plus ten. Uh, you don't know. Well, yeah, I know. I don't know. It's just up to you to determine if it's plus eight or plus ten. Oh, no, I meant I meant that you rolled you rolled very poorly. I guess you said you can't not get information. Yeah, one second. Let me read the thing for you. Unmistakable yeah. lore. You never never get information about your area of expertise wrong when you recall knowledge using any lore subcategory in which you're trained, i.e., esoteric lore. If you roll a critical failure, you get a failure instead, and. Using my esoteric lore ability. Uh, let's see, where does it say? Actually, it's not that. It is dubious knowledge. Charge trove of information. When you fail, but don't critically fail, critical knowledge check, you learn the correct answer and an erroneous answer. But you don't have any way to differentiate which is which. So something true and something false. Or however you want to interpret that. Okay, um... It's actually a dog. And it's a magic animal you can summon. <laughs> um, you learn that the Jade Cat can be activated upon command. Nice. Um, you're not sure. It has one of two functions. Um, one of them is that it turns into a real <coughs> um, feline that uh, obeys your commands for up to an hour and can be like used to scout out an area or like follow simple commands like a companion um, and after which it returns back into the, the jade cat form um, the other function is that uh, you can wear it as a pendant um, attached to or attached to your suit of armor for one minute after you activate the cat you treat all falls as if they are 20 feet shorter. You are not flat-footed when balancing upon an object or narrow surfaces, and uneven grounds is, are not ter difficult terrain for you. Hi. Hi. This cat, it seems that it either can be commanded to come to life and be like a real cat and help us out whenever needed, or, and I'm not quite sure, I can't remember, it's hard to tell, you can wear it as a pendant, and it basically makes you fall like a cat a little bit better. You can fall and not hurt yourself as easily. But, to be honest with you, I'm not sure which is which, so I wouldn't jump off any high surfaces just yet until we can figure it out. Anyone else want to take a look at it and see if they can narrow that down anymore? It's definitely one of those two, though. I'm very dubious in my knowledge, and I, I, I know one of them is real. <clears throat> uh, what type of role would it be again? I don't know. Um, he was just attempting knowledge I, checks yeah. on it. Yeah, I did an uh, esoteric so lore. Like it might be like Arcana, probably. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I could do a try an Arcana. It's a plus five. It's plus five. Let me roll. 
Um, yeah, you think it's definitely the uh, the balancing one. Okay. Oh, cool. It's, uh, it's definitely the balancing one. Nice Plus, you could probably oh, find out sorry. by just being like, activate, and yeah. it doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't turn into a cat. Okay. All right. Not the same as an onyx dog. Got it. Uh, same same uh same category of item it's the these are holdovers from uh they used to be called figurines of wondrous, wondrous power that's cool sick so who i who do we think should hold on to the cats definitely not karu considering it seems as though he can jump and not hurt himself ever yes, given no, that he's a doll it seems like that item is perfect for you <laughs> me Yes, I, I guess I've been uh, falling a lot recently, I guess. I, if no one else wants it, I'd be happy to take it, but uh, it's up to you all. Will you take care of Igash? Igash? Is that like Igad, but with a shh? It's Jade backwards. It's the cat's name. Ah, Igash. Yes. I will take great care of Igash. I'm very familiar with... Uh, magical objects and take great care of them. Look at my chalice. And I like go to reach for my chalice and forget that I have it set on the bench up top where people are using it. And then I like check myself and then I'm like point over there. Like, ah, it's over here. <laughs> I yeah, sure. A moment. I will happily take that. All right, um, we'll walk around some heavy dash then. Just called Jade Cat, you said, Brendan? Jade Cat, there it yep. is. Cool. You got it, boss. Um, and I don't need to do any. It's just I can just attach it to my armor. Yep. Okay. And my a requirement is trained. I cannot use it. Explain. Requirement: what you, you are trained in acrobatics. I am not trained oh, in acrobatics. I can use it. I and I put it on and I try to like balance on something and fall off and I go. I I don't. Believe this is working for me. Um, you know, it almost seems uh, like our good friend uh, Orpheus might be able to use it. I may, yeah, yeah, always sneaking about. This uh, should help you. Not to say that you need any help, but it might help you in those uh, tough situations. Uh, well, and I look back to gear? Uh, gear. Yeah, and then all. You should be able to type in Jade and see it. Um, I go, I, Wong, I, are you alright if I give Idaj to Orpheus instead? I think that he might get more use out of it. Whatever's best. I think this is best. Well, is anybody else trained in acrobatics? I'm not. I'm not, no. Okay. Thank you. I can I? Yeah. I. Uh, try not to fall. I give it to you. I, I think it's time to go to sleep now. Jesus Christ, fucking exhausted. I. It has been quite the cup, quite the couple of days, hasn't it? Yeah, you uh, used your magic, and used a jaw of a dead creature to cut open a rock. That was fucking crazy. I did. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do these things. I suppose. For the greater good. You know, a lot of my family is uh, able to cast magic like that, but. I never got the, I never got the throat singing part of it down. I noticed that you all don't have to do that, but it's something that the that the rune binders do. They, they kind of have to sing the magic, and I could never get the notes right, and that's kind of why, I ended up with the items instead. Aye, and they seem to be doing quite right for you. Yeah, the the chalice has certainly, certainly been helpful. I'll have to sit you down and tell you the story of me finding it one day. I'd enjoy that. Okay. And okay, you'll have though. to tell me uh, how you... This is kind of like looking... How you came to be. <laughs> Hi. Cool. Perhaps one day. Excellent. You get a cat companion? It's the Jade Cat. You have to be trained in acrobatics. Wow. Catch up. His name's e -Dash. It's nice that... Brendan created these items for each of us to have. <laughs> um, I think Krohan's going to point out that you guys, uh, he's like, 
there's a there's a clasp there also. Oh yeah yeah I forgot about the clasp. I had the piece of the piece ah, of hair man. in it. It's just like having our ship AI again, a way for the DM to give us hints in character. Thank you. Um, we didn't detect any magic on the clasp, right? Yeah, we did. It, it, it was magical. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'll, I'll roll an occultism plus eleven. I'm an expert. Okay. Not a big deal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, so I think Kauru looks it over, um, and I think Krohan's explaining a little bit as, you, as you're looking at it, and he's like, sometimes when a dwarf commits a great tr uh, sin, a piece of his hair is taken symbolically to show his shame. He's like, and there's like, there's like a single like, like thread of hair that's like in this clasp, and he's just like, it looks like it could be related. Um, and then you're like looking at it. Um, and, it, and it looks like it has the abilities of a diplomat's badge. Um, which sure. is when you're, if you're displaying this prominently, uh, this badge makes you more agreeable and you get a plus one item bonus to, to diplo diplomacy checks. Oh, okay. Hi. Who's the most diplomatic out of all of us? If you had to put it on a scale of one to... A hundred, I'd consider myself about an eight. I would also consider myself a seven, but I would be an eight with the class. Why did you say also when you had a different number than me? <laughs> I imagine he is trained as what? I am trained in diplomacy, yeah. I. I. I'm trained, but I'm not as, I don't have as high of a... <clears throat> people Same. don't, people tend to not like. I am also trained diplomatic. All right. Does anyone have like? Well, I feel I'm like not diplomatic. I was gonna say. Well, I I wouldn't say we should like with items like this. I'm usually of the boat to like make our good ones better instead of trying to like even everyone out. Yeah. Does I anyone agree. have an eight or higher? Nope. I just think we shouldn't give it to Austin because. No matter what bonus he has, he's still gonna roll a one. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I've got this like uh, Joe Stick here. That's good. Um, you might be right, but mathematically speaking, that shouldn't be true. Well, and you also talk to the most people, whether or not your character is good at it or not. Yeah, that's true. I do. <laughs> I do open my mouth the most. <laughs> that's an awesome thing that I was going to try to not have walk room do, but I can't help it. So. It's tough, man. Baby steps. It is. It is. <clears throat> okay, I'm fine giving it to Woke Run. Okay. As am I. Hi, yeah, I'd be happy to take it. I feel like I've seen something like this before, but I, uh, I'd be honored. I appreciate it. Uh, what was it called again, Brendan? A or diplomat's what? badge. Diplomat's badge, and I assume that's gonna be like another similar thing, but like a gear. It'd be like attached to your armor. Diplomats. Uh, you, oh, you Jesus. Put it in your hair. Christ. That is a 125 gold piece item. What was the name that you had for it, though? It was like the a class. Detritus of uh, deserted dwarves or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was like something for uh, like a dwarf who was like shunned from his. Oh, that's the hair piece. Oh. The hair that was well, stuck the, in it. Yeah, so we think that whoever had this might have been shunned at some point, like beforehand? Mm -hmm. uh, Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Interesting. That was the psychokinetic energy that I, I felt. Yeah, so it. yeah, so you, you PC can recall that dwarves sometimes acknowledge wrongdoing by severing a, bra a braid or beard. Mm. Um, so this thread of hair that's in this might have some significance to a long-forgotten dwarf. Okay, so a dwarf wouldn't just lose his hair and put it in this thing. Right. Or, like, have it pulled out or something. This is, like, intentional. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's got a... a didn't, I don't, uh, Brandon, do I get the, the diplomat's bearing ability with it, too? Or is it just the diplomacy check piece of it? Do you know? Uh, so there's, like, an ability with it to... Frequency uh, yeah. per day, a, a DC yeah, recall 20. Knowledge. Recall knowledge. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you get I don't know, because it's not actually the Diplomat's Badge, right? It's a thing that acts like the Diplomat's Badge? It is, it is. I mean, yeah, for all intents and purposes, it is a Diplomat's Badge. Okay. Okay, cool. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. I wonder, does that automatically... Oh, it does. Sick. 
it just automatically okay and it does show me item bonus plus one sick cool thanks guys <laughs> hi i am now your leader no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shit. And I'm gonna let uh, uh, Huang hold on to the the scrolls. I wouldn't like to. I, I don't want those. I can't. I can't read them. So. Huang, <laughs> hold What's to the say? All right. Thank you. Just keep it. <laughs> She'll keep them safe. And then she like shoves in her backpack like a <laughs> kindergartner. <laughs> like Dora in the map. All right. Now time for sleep. No so. sleep in Brooklyn. No. Da -da. no. Da -da. All right, you guys rest. Yep. Can we do? I don't know. I guess we want if we want like a a full night's rest. We just are like on shifts. I don't know if you want us to. We could just say whatever our current initiative is. Is what how we take guard or whatever. If that works for people. Yeah, works for me. Yeah, in this case, um, I mean, you guys are not in, a, in an area that's like overrun with wild animals or anything. Like, this is a safe, safe. place where this cool. guy's been living. So, you guys rest for the night. You get your HP back uh, for resting. We have a rest button. And Let's go. Yeah. yeah, you got a rest button. Hit the rest button, get all your spells back, all your stuff. You're fresh. Mm. It's the next day. What do you want to do? We'll continue on in this cave. Did we? Did it seem like this mushroom was like in our way, or can we like go back outside and keep on keeping on? Yeah. So if you're looking at the uh, at any Bottom of those map. maps on that page, um, basically it looks like there's a tunnel that leads pat out of the cavern here. Uh, I'll tell you kind of what that looks like. I can say um, I throw on that tunnel up there. That's the way we need to go next. Yeah. He'll he'll take out again. He's got like a shard, like a you know I, I picture a triangular piece of metal that he keeps like picking up and like holding on the palm of his hand and, and then it like spins around and points in a certain direction um, because it's it's a piece of something that's that for some reason it's a piece of armor or a metal or something that's for some reason is drawn to the Sky King's dagger that he's trying to find you know okay um, so he's like he's been using it to kind of guide your way so far and he pulls it out and it points down that dark tunnel Yes, I. He's like, I believe it was close to here when I dropped it the first time. We're getting much closer now. I hope we can find a way to descend deeper. That was the problem before. It was a a crevasse. You know, it was a it was a, a crevice. It was a. Hey, which one I, was it? Uh, I, whichever one is actually correct. I I don't know I the lingo. Like potato potato think... situation. I think both are correct. I think it's just a matter of you know whether or not you're British. Uh, I could be. I don't know. I think, I think one of them is like in ice, like a, like a crevasse is actually like in the snow somewhere. But in I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there was a, there was just a a gap that basically that he dropped it down, so he couldn't climb down in after it. But he saw it I, like fall to the the tunnels below. Um, so he starts leading you in this direction. Climbing kits this time around, so we should be able to get down there. So he leads you in this direction. Okay, I'm following. And uh, the fungus carpet here kind of sags. And you notice that there's a perfectly round tunnel that goes straight down, but it's about 20 feet wide. Should I but move? Like, Naturally. But basically, yeah, it's basically a perfectly round tunnel that goes straight down. Uh, it's 20 feet wide. Um, and, and like the, the fungus has grown over it. So there's like a, like a, a ropey, like thin layer of like these, these, uh, this fungus, um, that's kind of like covering it up and like, you like get close to the edge and like Crohan like tests it with like a foot. He's just like, it'll hold your weight. Um, we are a different sizes. <laughs> I it'll hold my weights, but will it hold all of our weights? So we need to take this one at a time. Well it's like he's just like he like he like holds out the 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 shard again 
and it seems to like be trying as hard as it can to like point down. Okay, so like we're talking straight down, like ninety degrees, like bam, right angle, yep. straight down hole. And where is this hole at? Like, like right, it's just Where'd like in the ground right here. Yeah, so you guys go down the tunnel for a little ways and find a hole. Okay. Go straight down. When he says it, it can, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I didn't fall, I didn't fall. So when he says it can hold our weight, what does he mean? Like we could walk across the hole and be fine? Yes. Okay, but we think we need to go down the hole, so we need to break this mushroom mm -hmm. and fall down this hole. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. But it's straight 90, so we would be falling. We wouldn't be like slight. It's not like a, a two degree yeah, angle like where we could slow. like, we couldn't like slow. We couldn't like, we don't have to use our climbing mm -hmm. kits to get down. Okay. So, I, he, so he's like looking, he's like looking at it and he's like, he's like the roots for this fungus are stretched down into this hole. We may be able to climb down. Hold. Got it. Mm -hmm. Hey, would it be like, the equivalent of a climbing kit maybe? Yeah, he's like, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, so all of you have, most of you have dark vision, so most of you can see uh -huh. about 60 feet down. And so, yeah, you see, like, the tendrils of this fungus kind of just going on down into darkness, but that's not the bottom of it. Like, so there's it's much deeper than 60 feet. Okay, yeah, and my climbing kit, climbing kit is, like, 50 feet of rope, so maybe use mm -hmm. the tendrils as long as we can, and then maybe try to use the climbing kit if all of a sudden the tendrils stop. I, I light a torch and drop it down the hole. <laughs> Love All it. the tendrils burn up. <laughs> yeah, just, we can't use it anymore. Burn down again, just so I can see it. Yeah. All right. Um. So, so the light falls. Um. Maybe about thirty, forty-five seconds. Somewhere nine, in that range. Nine point eight meters per yeah. second. Nine point eight meters per second squared. Nine times, would you say? About 30. Could I uh, roll an intelligence check to see if I could do that math? <laughs> uh, we'll say it's it's at least... 70 feet? Yeah, probably. That's probably pretty close. Okay. We'll, so we'll, we'll call it an even 300 feet down. <laughs> you say 70, and then you said, we'll call it close, and even 300. <laughs> he, said two, he said 270. Oh, I thought, I, thought so you said, I thought you said 70. <laughs> <laughs> You're like... 70, close enough, we'll call it an even 300. Even 300. <laughs> oh, that's, like... <laughs> that's how Brennan acts like I round with prices and time. Prices and time. That's poetic. Uh, okay, sorry, I just didn't hear you right. Cool, all right, yeah, so 300 feet down. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, we take all the precautions that we can. I mean, I take all the pre precautions that I can. I don't want to speak for everyone else. But if it, like, truly does feel like... There is maybe some tendrils that are solid all the way down. Like I can hook like, you know, like I like I think they're what are like is it crampons that are like the things mm -hmm. that like attach on on your boot. Maybe I don't know anything that I could do with my climbing kit to make the tendrils act more like they are just rope and like you know still utilize the stuff that I have plus the stuff that already exists to maximize my chances of not falling three hundred feet and dying would be uh, what I would be doing before we go down, so. That's fair. I'm waiting for, uh, for Karu to say he just jumps. Yeah, no, uh, Karu does make a show of staying with the group just in case <laughs> there is something down there that he is he hasn't recognized yet or That's hasn't. Yeah. There could be unknown dangers other than fall damage down there. Just one big yeah. spike. So, so you can all slowly climb, you know, and those of you yeah. that are... are more adept and more equipped can help the others kind of like stay close um and you get about halfway down this tunnel so question and then uh -huh. before going down this tunnel can i like this this is me being trying to be funny can i like latch silver forge to like my harness and just have him like dangling, dangling below me as i'm <laughs> climbing down this hole sure you know how they do it, like, with, like, dogs whenever they're climbing or something? Yeah. Just kind of hanging there? That's what I imagine Silver Forge uh, being like. Can you like, imagine like... Percy? Yeah. No. Bow just rolls up into his ball no. and falls all the no, way down. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you guys make it about halfway down. So, we'll say about 150 feet down. Um, and these tendrils kind of stop. So, you got to find a, figure out a way to get down the last 150 feet or so. Can I 
use my climbing kit? I mean, I guess that's only going to get me 50 feet. But, I mean, theoretically, yeah, if we have three climbing kits, rope. that's 150 feet of rope, right? Yeah, you just have to tie it all together. Yeah. So what kind of... <clears throat> I don't know, this is tough. Because it's like, are we all next to each other, or are we like in a line coming down? Like, and one of us hits the end of the tendrils. Like, I'm trying to picture what's think, going on. I don't see us being in a line, but maybe, uh, like, if you're looking at it like a clock face, having, like, at different hour intervals. I just don't know how big, how big is this hole? Like, diameter? Fair. You said 20 feet. 20, 20 feet? feet? Okay. Okay. And then I think we could probably be staggered a little bit. We probably still would want to have them a little, like, one person go down, wait a little bit, then the next person go down, so we're staggered in. So, like, that big? Down, the mark I just made on the map? Sure. Um, yeah, so do you do you have at least, the, at least three of you have climbing rope, right? Yeah. Yeah, anyone who has a climbing kit, has, it comes with 50 feet of rope. And then I also just have rope in my backpack, too. It doesn't have a length on it, though, for whatever reason. So you have enough rope to get down. It's still going to be, or say, it'll still be a, an athletics check to climb down for everyone this last 150 feet. So we'll just do it whatever order you guys want to do it in. Um, and if we're doing it on the climbing kit, if we critically fail, we could do a DC 5 flat check to prevent a fall. Is what like the text of the climbing yeah. kit says. If that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I have consistently failed at that, so I will roll first here. Well, Kroon says, "I got so this. Really Don't worry. This. I'm sure that the rope will probably be more slippery for some reason than these mushrooms, wet mushrooms. Let's see how it goes." Well, Kroon's just like, "Hold my beer." Um, I got a 24. Roll to 17. You're fine. Aye, it's easy. Just do this. Walkroon descends into the darkness. Oh, God. Does he scream? I do, but just for fun. Oh. You'll have to roll a deception check to believe me. No, no, I want to hear Austin scream. Ah! That's Walkroon screaming. I can't scream in an accent. We can clip that. <laughs> I could, but will you? Dylan might. <laughs> <laughs> it's silly not to now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, All right, who else? I can go next. Okay. Uh, was it athletics or? Athletics. Yep. Okay, it was. Uh, and I was using my climbing kit. Plus seven, tw uh, 22 on my athletics. Okay, Elnet climbs down. Um, I ended up with a 20, not natural. Okay. Dirty, nasty 20. You said we're adding what roll to this? Athletics. Or what? athletics. I rolled an eight. Morty Four also rolled a 20, not natural. Wait, Huang rolled an eight? Yeah. For a total rolled an eight, of... you got an eight. I, I rolled a two, I have an eight. Holy crap. Oh, okay. Were you using a climbing kit? I think we all are. No. Oh. I guess we're Right? Isn't that the three. idea? If we're all. Yeah. I guess I don't know how it works. Oh, okay. I don't have a climbing kit, do I? We all attached our climbing kits together. But I mean, I guess I don't... I think the idea behind the climbing kit is that you're also using, like, the pulleys and carabons and everything, so... I don't really know what we're doing, necessarily. Yeah, we... I thought we all went out and bought climbing kits as preparation for this adventure. After... I did. Curlbond came and found us. He did mention it. Um, okay. That's fine. Huang may have 
not brought one. So, uh, what did what did what did, what did Lorda get? Unnatural twenty. Oh, okay. All right. So she's fine. Um, Karu, are you just gonna float the rest of the way down? Uh, yeah. When he he's gonna go last, just to see that everyone's good and if there's not like anything he needs to be ready for down there. Uh, and then Watching the car wreck. Yeah, and he can right. see feet, so he jumps and then looks down. And Wong sure turns into a bird or anything. Wong, <laughs> make a reflex save. <laughs> <sighs> Ten. Okay. <laughs> Feeling slow. <laughs> All right. Um. So so Huang like slips. Um. On the last like fifty feet of this rope here, um. And you try to catch yourself, but you just kind of like fall the rest of the way, like slowly, like like burning your hands and stuff. Oh. Uh, and then you hit the ground. So Huang is going to take some damage here. Yeah. Great. Uh. That will be uh, 25 points of damage. Jeez, horse. <laughs> Is your character still up? Yep. It's like one of my, one of my mom fell down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so <laughs> Wong takes... <laughs> Jesus. It's Wong just takes some damage. strange innocence of that. It's like when my mom fell down the stairs. <laughs> She just rolls over, and that's the first thing out of Huang's mouth. <laughs> it's just like... That's what Huang says. Huang's mom yep. fell down the stairs too once. <laughs> exactly. Dad said she did it all on her own. I, ah, uh, if we just wait here a couple minutes, I don't want anyone to waste any of their spells. This chalice fills up on its own. Take a drink of this. I can and, also uh, do a medicine check to heal her a decent amount, too. Okay. You do that. I'll give her... Oh, Huang, do you uh, drink the liquid from my chalice? I drink the worm piss. Ah! I drink the water of the life. Water of life. Nice. You can now Fire. see the future. Ah, uh, no, you get back nine from me. Nice. I rolled a 25 on my... Um, which, okay. I'm assuming that you said Ready? to be like 15... Yeah. Okay. Then that's 48 to healing. One, four, five, seven. 23. Hi, you didn't need oh, me. <laughs> I was guessing. Well, you did for All those right. extra two. So you're back to full. So Huang is fine. So you guys are kind of tending to Huang, and also the others are kind of looking around uh, in this tunnel that you're in. And all of a sudden, it's basically this tunnel went straight down. What are you waving at me for? I'm not waving at you. I'm waving at our new follower. Oh, okay. You got a new follower? Lady Gamer GG. Okay, Lady Gamer GG. Thanks. Um, okay, so yeah, so you guys are taking a look around this tunnel. Basically, <laughs> it went straight down 300 feet and then turns at 90 degrees again. And it just kind of keeps going forward, kind of that same about 20 foot like circumference or so not circumference uh diameter that's the word i wanted sure um so it just kind of turns and like you look around you look around and like there are um like scratches all along the exterior of the tunnel that look like they're made by like large scales scraping against the oh. Oh, is it the termite no. again? <laughs> is it the sandworm? Oh, uh, cave worm? Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so, but then, like, you can also see, like, that there's, like, uh, like, it looks like there used to be, like, rainwater, like, accumulating down here, uh, almost. Like, there used to be water flowing down here, but it's, it's since, like, dried up. Like, you can see, like, the bottom of the tunnel has, like, like pools in it where it would have collected water before. I... I hope those scratches are caused by our favorite dragon, the cloud dragon, Jacarisand. Yeah. Oh, look at you referencing hey. notes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> the cloud dragon found Ooh. deep underground. <laughs> huh. Okay. Can I, can we, can I roll a check on this? Do I reckon, I mean, again, 
cave dweller. Can I do some? Uh... Yeah. Okay, give me that. Uh, so I want to. Man, it's one of those moments where like rolling esoteric lore makes the most sense because it's the higher check. But like lore cave probably is also pretty good. I'm gonna roll specifically on the scales part. Like it looks like there were scales. I would like to roll on that to see if I can identify any sort of a creature that may have left that. And then if no one else ends up doing anything, I'll roll a, a lore cave check on like the water to see if I can maybe figure out what maybe happened here at some point. Um, so esoteric lore, lore, it should be a plus 10 if it's a hot cursor creature. Okay. Uh, I think it, you're Cro or not Crohan. While Kroon starts to sweat a little bit because oh, he's, expe no. he's inspecting these things here and it looks like they could match the uh, the scale markings left behind from a crimson worm. Crohan! I thought you said that you didn't see any worms down here. What is this? What? We gotta go back up. I got it's... and like and like Walker and like starts like grabbing back at the rope. He's like, hold friend. This is I... all new. None of this was here before when I passed by many years ago. <sighs> If there's a cave worm here, then we're going in the right direction. We must go deeper. Oh. Is it worm or worm? Worm. W O R M. Okay. Shyhalud. <laughs> um, I am uh, giving myself the frightened one condition right now. Okay. He's like shaking, like he can hardly like. He's just. He's like honestly just like. Like, if it's like a clear trail, like, whichever way we're going, he's, like, looking the other direction. Like, where, like, this worm came from or whatever. Um, and I, I would say that once he figures that out, he's kind of not thinking about the water or anything else now. So he's not going to be able to necessarily, like, recall knowledge on anything else that's going on. Okay. Does anybody else want to do anything down here? Or are you just going to follow the, the magical uh, trail? I would like um, to keep the magical trail. I would like to be okay. the magic and psychosignificant uh, objects. Okay, that's fair. Um, okay, yeah, and there's like, it doesn't look like there's anything that's like, that's been left behind in this tunnel. It's pretty clean. Um, there may be some faint scratches here and there, um, indicating other creatures traveling back and forth this way. And the whole area stinks. What does it smell like? It smells like water of life. Yeah, it smells like it, it smells like uh, it's a very um, musky odor. Like a billionaire that was recently, you know, an inspiration to fanboys all over the world, <laughs> suddenly taking a stark right turn. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay. I understand now. <laughs> So, uh, so, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hold out the shard and say, I believe it's this way. We must follow the tunnel. Are you ready? Walker is just kind of like shaking there, but like, looks like he's going to follow and not at the back of the pack, but very much not at the front of the pack either. Uh, I have Kron my rifle says, out too. He says, you know, cave worms always swallow the middle of the pack first. I light us up. Bow just hears worms and gets really enthusiastic and shakes his head really quickly. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, let's get going. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can leave. So you travel for about half a mile down Jesus this tunnel. Jesus, wept. Like, just traveling, 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 and you kind of come out in, like, uh, so before, we were like, oh, this, this is a big underground cave complex you know the room with the mushroom we were like wow this is a big opening like there's there's you know tons of space in here and you we were walking and all of a sudden you feel a swift breeze pick up and just kind of like hit you in the face with the smell of like this this stinking musky <laughs> like 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 smell and like you you can tell you've entered this massive underground cave complex by the way that it's kind of moving around and you see like to your left off in the distance, 
it looks like maybe like reflections of something. And as you guys kind of adjust to this 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 larger room, you see it's actually like tiny torches, um, like like moving around in the in the darkness, like a mile away. Like tiny it's just like this torches like, a mile away. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you see, like you see, like these faint glimmers of like torchlight in like this like, in this huge room. There's like a canyon basically that goes down to your left. Um, and like you can see like the flickering of, of things moving around like tiny print pricks of light um, and then to the right it looks like there are like this the formation like some some buildings starting that look like like homes uh, but they look like they've been abandoned my god this is where the ancient you, dwarves lived when you get here um, the, uh, the the shard of armor yeah. Suddenly starts spinning uncontrollably. It's oh, just like and he's like, I can't tell. And he like tries to like focus it in and he's like, it seems to be pointing in both directions. It's the eye of Ender when you get on the spot Minecraft where they just start spinning in the air. I uh, 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 um Um you said Crimson Worm earlier. I did. Would I know if that emits any sort of light? Like, does that glow at all? I.e., could there be a crimson worm way down there that is pinpricks of light down this tunnel? Crimson, um, red, light, glowy is kind of where my mind goes. So I will tell you that. Um, and I can roll maybe, again if I need to. Maybe while Kroon knows a few, a thing or two about. Has he seen a thing or two? Oh, yeah, he knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Um, while Kroon knows that crimson worms are among the largest and most oh. dangerous cave worms sure. that exist, um, sure. but they are usually affiliated with their fire breath. I, 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 it looks like I think we should to, to, towards the buildings. We should go towards the buildings first. I, I am not. Never mind that the fire down there. That could, it could be a worm. We have no reason to go. It's too far away anyway. Let's go to the buildings. Let's go to the go to the path that has the buildings up towards it. Oh, Kroon, are you a coward? I. You've never seen the shit that I've seen. I know you're an orc and you've seen battle and war and whatever you may have you, but you've never seen a crimson worm before. I have. We could not take it. It would destroy us. This way. We're going this way. I'm going this way. I won't go down that way. I'm not doing I, it. I, I would agree. Even though, like, I probably had not seen one of these worms. It's like, going from context clues, it's like, yeah, let's, let's, do, let's avoid that thing. Hey, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, what if we tame it? I we're not fucking tame it the worm. And I just start walking down the other path. I'm not what waiting for anybody else. What if we go with the worm? I what how could you ever ride worm and become a fremen? I that would be freaking cool. I don't think it's the same <laughs> thing though. <laughs> hey, what the fuck is a fremen? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think Krohan will agree with you, and he's like. I think the, I have the ideal physique. Yeah. All I heard. I am. <laughs> Clip it. I don't know why you cut out there, but all it was was. I think I have the perfect physique. Yeah, uh, it just stopped. <laughs> we didn't hear anything else afterwards. For worm writing. Yeah, no. I assumed that's what it was, but the fact that we couldn't hear that was incredible. More I'm is more, more 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 team team. Have you seen me? Yes. Have you seen me? <laughs> more than anyone else here. Floppy yeah. hair and the skinny tall body. I am ideal. Like Bo Burnham. <laughs> ideal. <laughs> Bo Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, I All think right. Rohan will agree with you. He's like, it would be safer to check out the buildings first. Hey, I agree. Let's, Let's go now. This path smells of Zulgats. I agree with you. I think. Zulgats are, are troglodytes. Mm. They stink. I thought it was like a Zubat. And they live in the dark. The Pokemon. Land. <laughs> you got, I got me you there. there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were like Zubats. 
<laughs> oh, fuck me. Okay. Um, no. Okay, so you start start heading that direction. So let's see. Maybe we can uh, move you guys to a map. Was this the right path or the left path, out of curiosity? For my, this is the right path. The theater of my mind. Okay, cool. The right path. The right path, like, directionally, not the... Yeah. Right Not path. the correct path. Going yeah. on the wrong path, so go on the other. Yeah. Go going the right direction. I'm excited. New map. Oh, jeez. Maybe. Hold on. New map, new map. New map, new map. Let's see. Oh, no. That's still doing it wrong. Hold on. Need to change it to nighttime again. Nighttime. Gosh, I gotta nighttime. do this all the time. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. Oh, it's a little bit too late. Hurry, look at the name of the map to reveal things. Workshop Heights. <laughs> Such a meta douchey thing for me to do, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about that. All right. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. So you kind of emerge. Well, fuck you! <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Doesn't get played anymore. Emerge here. Um, and it looks like a couple of uh, ruins. Still buildings. loading. Still well, loading. I'm, telling you, I'm telling oh, okay. you what you're seeing. Okay. Um, there are a pair of ruined, uh, ruined buildings that appear to have been struck by a natural disaster of some sort. They're collapsed and have clearly been abandoned for years. So you're kind of coming up on this, this like, civilized area, but the buildings look like they've been knocked down and How kind can, of covered with rubble. How can we tell it was natural? Can't necessarily, but rocks are usually natural. Usually. Keep that in mind. You're saying there's a chance. Mm -hmm. So you're saying there's a chance. You know what this is reminding me of right now? The nope. uh, Witcher one-shot story thing that we did where we went inside the mountain and there was the mystery to solve and stuff and the collapsed ruins and all that. Yep. What this reminds me of is the Fleetwood Mac song, Landslide. And then every time we say Silver Forge, it reminds me of the Fleetwood Mac song, Silver Springs. And so, yeah. really, Speaking of which, I, we have no animal companions on this map. Oh, that's true. They're gone forever. They couldn't climb. <laughs> they just stayed up the top. Um. Okay. How far down is this? Like, how far did we walk down this tunnel? Maybe you said it and I didn't catch it. Sorry. Um. Like how far away from the Y? When you split? Like split. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that. Um. Like, if you had to guess. Would I am I still frightened, or do I think I'm safe enough from this worm now at this point? Probably. I know you didn't give me the condition, so it's really up to me. It's a, it's a flavor of frightened, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, you walked for another another like, fifteen minutes or something. You okay. know, like you guys were just walking at a normal pace. Okay. Um, yeah, walk through and just calm down a little bit. Then I, I think we're probably, far enough away from, whatever was down the other side. Now, I said, I let's uh, I let's what's the, is the armor piece pointing this way? Does this does it seem like we're on one of the paths now? This is this is one of the locations. Yes, I got right. it close. Be careful, I. Uh, Crowhorn runs like... into the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> it revealed everything for us. I appreciate that. Um, it? Yeah, because we have like the actually not everything. It looks like there is something definitely up north. I, be careful! Oh, I, I can't see nothing, and now I can see everything again. I understand what happened. You reset the fog of war. I appreciate that. It's more immersive that way. Um, everyone, be careful when we're going through the, the buildings. It looks like there's been some collapses. and they, they look old, real old. I don't know. Can anyone, anyone indate that? Uh, I wish I had a dedicated Delver role. Like, I feel like finding ancient ruins is potentially something... Actually, it's something I know I have done before, but I wouldn't know what to roll to necessarily date how old this might be, you know? Um, I would like to roll society? either crafting or society. They're both a plus five, so it doesn't really matter which one. 
but I figure crafting would be like maybe recognizing a style of workmanship or something like that. Okay. Do you want to get up closer and inspect like the walls? Uh, I will carefully approach and 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 investigate. Yeah. Okay. I'm not just All gonna right. go barging in. Just go ahead and roll crafting. Uh, that is a total of 19. Okay. Um, you would recognize this as uh, the architecture of the Drathnalar. Drathnalar. <laughs> which I believe... I don't know what that is, but it's cool. They are the Deep Gnomes. Yes. Cool. Uh So you recognize maybe it's a little bit uh, shorter than normal, but it, it it has some hallmarks that are um, traditional gnomish architecture. Can I get a plus eight to recall knowledge check on these gnomes? Uh, just just on their what, just what? their like their history, like where they went. Did they did they come up with us? Do they have any sort of a relation with us? Um, Maybe if we wanted to get more specific with it, is there anything that they created that of great value that might still be down here? Like given what Elmat was able to figure out? Yeah, I mean, they definitely still, so, so um, deep gnomes just live in the Darklands. Like they don't, they, they, they did not they keep going to the surface like okay. some of their, their Sylvan, like <laughs> brethren, like the the regular gnomes that live up above, or distant cousins of the deep gnomes that live okay. all the way uh, down here under uh, underground. Um, so yeah, you would say you know that they still have cities um, that li that that are that exist down here, and um, from the looks of it, you guys are like maybe this was a village or something of them, um, and it looks like it's it's obviously been damaged at some point and then abandoned. Like old, like are we talking like a thousand years ago or like last year? Like, is there can we get like a rough how long um, do we think this has been like this? You could say that it was hit, so they quit it. They hit uh -huh. it. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Lorna just goes um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will say um, uh, it looks this damage looks to be from sometime in like the last ten years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So older, but not super old. Got it. It's not, yeah, the stuff down here is not like decaying and Ancient. decrepit. It's yeah, just, okay. it's just knocked down and it's covered in enough dirt and dust that you're just like, no one's been living here. Okay. Um, I, I think that we should maybe move forward here, work our way through the rubble and see if there's anything on the other side. I feel like in an alternate timeline, Krohan ran through all of the crap and I saw a door to the north. My mind has been reset. I don't know if that's true or not. Regardless, I'd like to detect magic through the entire. Yeah, good, good shout. Good shout. Okay. Detect magic is like a small area of effect, right? Like it's like a. Yeah, I got move. Ball. It's like a ball downtime ball. activity though, too, right? Like or journey or adventure mode or whatever. Like you can just yeah, keep detecting it's magic. Yeah, so you can just keep keep like keep it up. Yeah, it's a thirty-foot emanation. So thirty feet around you, you're looking for magic. You're not um, detecting any right now. I'm going to have my Stickleberry Stickler and my Chalice out. Okay. Not the rifle this um, time. And I'm just going to try to work my way. I guess, are these like giant boulders? Because like, could we theoretically like work our way around? I guess I don't know what's over. Work our way around this, or do we think we have to go through this? I see like a wall here, but all this is black. So I don't know. Yeah, so so that's because yeah you can't see past the wall that's there. Um, but like, basically, um, what okay, you're seeing is like the the rocks would be like difficult terrain. You know, you're seeing the edges of like buildings and stuff like that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, I don't think I would want to work my way through the build. I think I I don't want to walk my way through the building because I'm afraid it might collapse again if we disturb anything. So I'm gonna work my way around this this left side here and see what I can find. And uh, Walkroon's idea, I won't do it because I don't know if I'm going to run anything, is just to kind of work his way through this, checking left, checking right as he's walking, and just head up to the north. Okay. 
What is everybody else doing? Are you following? Are you exploring in different directions? Yeah, I'm gonna explore in that in the same direction of like where he's going. But yeah, I'm gonna go over to this side on the right just to kind of close to everyone else. But you know, in case something pops up over here, kind of slowly make, working my way through. Okay. Oh god, Huang has done a 180. What about what about Huang and Orpheus? What are you guys doing? Um I think Huang's gonna maybe go up here. Right through the rubble of the building. I like it. She's Bolt. going to burrow through it like a mole. <laughs> She's just like, I'm Wong's just I going to right song. here and runs through it. She like, says, uh, you hear her say, okay, I gotta go fast. <laughs> I, I think next time we have a prisoner that we think we should keep alive, we should let Tuang deal with them. <laughs> Alright. Um, so you guys are kind of Splitting up into like two separate groups there. Hey. Yep. All right. Um. Does anyone here speak undercommon? <laughs> I do. I no do. shit. Wow. Okay. That's cool. No. Oh. Suck rot. Is that the same thing? Suck rot. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I honestly don't know because they changed the names. Well, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> well, I picked this one because it was for like people down in the uh, not under dark. What is it? <laughs> down in the deep. Dark lands. Dark lands. Down in the mm -hmm. Dark lands. Okay. There's a remastered version. Yeah, it's Sac Sacvroth. You're Sacvroth. right. Yeah. You have to click. That's the remastered way to say it. The the pre remastered way to say it's under common. Okay. So, um, so, so it looks like uh, Karu and, and that makes the most sense actually. Um, Karu and Elnats, you kind of hear some something. It sounds like something muttering, something kind of mumbling to itself. And it's, and it's you, you get, you know, you keep walking through like the ruins of this building, and then you you finally make out what it's saying, like just mumbling, mumbling, mumbling. It's just a little bit closer. Yes, no, no. And th this creature jumps from the darkness onto Huang, and it's this. Horrifying oh. alien looking fleshy beast with like a <laughs> mouth full of teeth and these pit pitted black eyes. And uh we'll pick up there next week. Oh god, it's the fucking thing from Stranger Things. Kind of. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, it's Just a little bit closer. Oh, and we think that that's what was talking, yeah? Yes. Oh my god. Going from dead. Okie dokie then. Oh, by Andy Circus too. That's some crazy <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's Golem. All right. Well, What's thanks everyone in the stream. Sure. <laughs> 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 uh, I hate that. All right. Uh, <laughs> April third. Looking good. Looking good. I think so. Cool beans. All right. Thanks, stream. Uh, thanks for everyone hanging out. Oh, Brennan's not bleeding from his nose anymore. Crits and Crayon Chips. Mm. Catch yeah, us on still YouTube, from my nose, Twitter, I think dead. Twitch, maybe. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, buddies.